Hello everybody, this is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming News with Paul and Adrian. We have a special guest, David Bunting. I, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Right. Uh, he is the, uh, I guess, the owner and CEO of Crown Harvest uh, Hardware. Uh, he does retail and, um, and uh, I guess, renovations. Go ahead and explain a little bit about what your company uh, does. And uh, I know I didn't do a very good job, but um, we'll go ahead and let him explain uh, how his company started and, and uh, we'll get going here. Yeah, so uh, thanks. It's uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's great to have an opportunity to finally uh, meet and talk to you. Been been watching your show for a long time. Um, Crown Harvest Hardware. We uh, we uh, import building supplies from across the world. Generally speaking, sell them in bulk to apartment communities, student housing communities, uh, and we do hospitality furnishings as well. Um, I was very blessed to be in England last week, and we we partnered with a company based there to start selling our products there. And so um, I listen, I've been doing this for 15 years, but you know, the only thing I hadn't done was start my own company. God gave me the logo and gave me the vision to do this. And in January of last year, I started it with, I mean, not any money at all. Um, only a vision and, so, and a lot of experience. And uh, I, I got my Bible out. I, I'd heard this, uh, this method from Pastor Rick Wiles and I got my, my Bible out and I stood on it and I said, God, I'm going to stand on your word and trust you. You know, this is all boom or bust, but everything I have, I give to you. And I do this if it's your will. And uh, anyways, uh, 19 months later, uh, there are things happening with this company that I, um, I couldn't explain, but the most important part is I'm getting to explain what the logo means, what the name means. And we're talking about God everywhere I go. And, and, um, I'm finding, especially like in England last week, people need to hear it. Um, I would say England is a little farther ahead of getting God out of their society than we are, which is scary. Yeah, I'm surprised, though. Um, you know, a lot of companies, they kind of keep their uh, religious views to themselves because they don't want to offend people. They think that it will hurt their company. Uh, but what is your experience in putting it all out there, you know, with the name of your company? And, uh, and promoting your company as a godly company, has that helped you or hurt you? I, it's helped me. And so I have, I, I've been putting this on LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, if you go look at my post, it's everywhere. Um, I am finding that people, I also have it in my email signature. Um, Jeremiah 29 11 is kind of a cornerstone verse for our company. And um, I frequently hear people say, thank you for saying this. I needed to hear this today. Or thank you for reminding me, I need to get back into church or, you know, I need to go serve people. And so I did a, a short video on LinkedIn a few days ago, or maybe it was a few weeks ago. But anyways, I just said, I think we need more people being bold and standing out and speaking up for Christ. I think not only it's needed, but I know for a fact it works. Yeah, and it, it, it's amazing, you know, uh, just a word or two has such an impact on people. And people don't realize that, uh, you know, your, your, your witness is your life, how you live your life and how you present yourself to other people. That's more of a witness than, you know, trying to hit them over the head with a Bible, you know, just the way you live your life, how you operate your company. So um, are you just based in the United States or, or, or do you do work all over the United States and the world? Can you give us a, a brief um, description of how wide is your company? How big is your company? So we we have uh, we sell all across the United States. It's myself. We have a partner in Atlanta and a partner in Lake Tahoe. So we kind of cover the entire United States. Then we have an employee in Vietnam and China. Those are primarily where most of our consumer goods are made. And then we we just think this deal last uh, last week to have a strategic partner in. He, he's really in Manchester, England, but he sells a lot in London as well. So we're going to utilize his facilities for a while, but, um, but, but, you know, I, I can anticipate that we'll have some type of presence of our own there soon too. And uh, what's pretty amazing about that is he's a believer too. <laughs> so. so, so do you guys just sell products or do you do renovations too? I mean, are you, are you both? Are you just sell the, you know, the, the fixtures and, and all of the stuff that goes into places? Uh, how does that work? 
So what we're really good at is producing the material at the factories that make them now. So I'm, I'm, I haven't reinvented the wheel here, but we supply the materials. It, it gets a way too complicated to do the install piece because you've got to have licenses in you know, 50 states. So we, we partner with GCs all around the country, or sometimes we just get a phone call. And I, I just finished a, a, a student housing project in Tucson, and um, we just did shower glass for that. And uh, I literally showed up there, and we unloaded the shower glass, and it took off. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, so you're just basically a, su a supplier uh, of products. Now, um, I guess if somebody goes to your website, I have it here up on the screen, uh, they can look at your projects and your products, and they can order directly from you, and then uh, you guys uh, uh, ship it out to them. Is that how that works? Well, since we sell in bulk, it's probably best to just contact us and, you, you know, and, and have a conversation because we don't have a retail location, so to speak. Oh, okay. And um, but they can see a lot of what we do on there. They can obviously reach out to me from there. And I, one thing I really this is something I do when I'm all over the world. I say, please just go to our about section and read my story <laughs> because the logo in the name says everything about the time that we're in, why I started the company. So, okay. So let's go into that. Um, you want to start off um, uh, with your, you know, how you met God and maybe a little bit of your, your background and then lead into yeah. your company. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and, and hear your story because everybody's got a different story, how God actually entered their life and touched them. So uh, I'm eager to hear that. So in about 2012, I was at the peak of my kind of business career. I was doing what I'm doing now. I was making a ton of money. I, I, I you know, went to church maybe once every 10 years, had zero relationship with God. But I think reasonably speaking, I was a good guy, had a lot of friends and everything else. And um, right around that time, I, I left my job because I, I, I had some sense, I think, that I was I had created and I had done everything myself. I didn't know that I had had help all along. So um, my financial situation went from really good to really bad. And I mean, fast. And uh, during that time, I had two really supernatural experiences. The first time I was running at like 430 in the morning outside and I heard this voice say home and I looked up and I'm looking straight up. And next thing you know, I'm standing like this and I, um, <laughs> I mean, at this time, I'm, I'm watching Ancient Aliens. I just assumed it was some, you know, alien speaking to me. I had no idea what it meant. Fast forward a few months, things had gotten so bad financially for us that that I knew I was going to have to sell our beautiful home that we had just moved into. And, and so we did that. And it was a very negative time for, for the family and, and, and for my wife. But I, I knew we had to do it. And... I happened to be standing outside one day and it was, uh, I live in Indiana. So we get about four months of this gray filmy cloud over our, uh, over our houses every day. It's pretty depressing. But as I'm standing outside, this, this beam of light comes through one of these clouds and it, the best way to describe it is if it, it was like if gold were in light, that's what it would, would feel like. And as I'm standing there and this, this lasted maybe 15 seconds max, but Every problem, every worry, everything I ever thought was wrong with my life disappeared. I felt nothing but pure peace and joy. And um, interestingly enough, like as I was going through this tumultuous period in my life, one of my friends that had stuck with you know by me the whole time and hadn't left me because I wasn't making as much money was on the phone with me. And that became significant later too. But um I remember it all stopped. I was crying when it happened and um, I knew I had to go to church. And so we found a church close to home. We went in there. I got baptized a few months later and I gave this testimony during my baptism. And uh, the pastor, who's a very good friend of mine, I said, you know, I said, the, the thing I regret the most at the time was, is here this such a profound thing happened to me and I'm on the telephone, <laughs> you know, and I was almost embarrassed about it. But what I realized later was, is that guy who was on the phone was the guy that stuck with me in these tough times that I was in. And, and that was really Jesus's way of saying, I'll never leave you either. And so I, I, I think me being on the phone actually had a pretty significant meaning. Yeah, that's amazing. So you actually seen a physical beam of light come down. That was, uh, that was actually pretty wild. So, 
So this happened. And, and listen, I thought, I thought, now you can ask my wife and my family. We, I thought when that happened that I had hit the lottery and that I was getting ready to move into a 10,000 square foot house and have 10 cars. I thought I was gaining, you know, the, the, the resources of the world. I, I had little idea what I was actually in store for. Yeah. So, so uh, immediately you, you felt that your life was changing and this was back in 2012, you said? Yeah, this is 12 and going into 13. Back then I didn't do a great job of keeping up with dates like I do now. But, um, but, but yeah, that happened. Um, I, that started, you know, we moved into a rental house. We we're kind of like, you know, batting the hatches down, trying to prepare. It's, it's almost like I felt like I was under a curse. I could not, I went from having all the success to barely being able to figure out how to sell anything or do anything right. Like just everything financially and professionally for me completely fell apart. And, and this went on for many, many years. It, um, and that's after I, the vision, that's after the, the, you, you had the encounter with God. So when right. did it, when did things start turning around for you and, and, and how, and how does this lead into the company that you have now? Well, so in, in 2017 ish, I had an opportunity to go back into this business. I had to take a little bit of a hiatus from what I'm doing now just because I needed a job. But um, I, I had an opportunity to go with the company and I also had two other job offers and they were really good. So this is like a big turning point for, for our household. And about that time, these prophetic dreams started to happen. And um, during the time that these three jobs came around, I, I literally, I could not make a decision which one to, to take. I was scared because of what I had been through. And um, the dreams that I had basically guided me into the, the right job, which was getting back into this space, um, which my wife honestly didn't want me to do because of what it had created in our life um, before. But um, anyways, it turned out to be the right decision. That was actually the, the company that started getting me to travel to Asia and, and, and built me up to where I learned how to be comfortable doing that by myself. Yeah, so that's great. So. Um, so you started this business, uh, the crown harvest, uh, tell us the dream that, that, that God let you, uh, about your logo and everything. How did that, um, how did that come about? So that, this came later. I, 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 if we have a chance, I'd really like to go back and explain to you kind of some of the other dreams that I had, but, um, this was kind of more as I was on my way up. And God was just giving me like very direct knowledge about how to improve things in my life. And um, a friend of mine who I think is an angel, but he, he says he's not, I don't know, but he's definitely my spiritual guide here. He told me that I would have, by the time I got home from this drive I was on, that I would have a name for the company and a logo. And sure enough, the next day I did. And so my logo is a, is a, is a bundle of wheat. Um, you know, when Jesus returns, he's going to separate everybody into wheat or tares. And so if you look closely at the bundle of wheat, you'll see a crown of thorns wrapped around that bundle. And the word crown is just a synonym for the word final. And so really what my company name is, is it means at the final harvest, you know, you want to be in the wheat. It's also a reminder that those of us that are wheat need to help people get out of the tear category if we can. And then really the third meaning of the, of the, of the name is, is that we are in the final harvest. Um, I'm convinced this is a big you know, thing that came from my dreams is I firmly believe that someone or some people alive today will see Jesus return. And so yeah. that's, that's the message that my company and I listen, everywhere I go, I tell this exact story. I'm like, Hey, you know, you might think you have a lot of time, but I don't think we have, 50 years or I could be wrong. Maybe we have a hundred years, but don't wait. Well, I'm a little bit more pessimistic than you. I think we have less than five years before all of this pretty much wraps up it. You know, the way things are heading, if, if uh, you read the book of revelation and all the uh, old Testament prophets, uh, everything is popping. I mean, we're right here for, uh, you know, I believe that we're that close from a, a nuclear confrontation with either Russia or China. But let's talk about these these prophetic dreams that you have. Uh, you had, I guess, what from 2012 to current, and uh, and how did that affect your company? 
and uh, and what has God shown you uh, that's going to take place? I mean, from your perspective, let's get into that a little bit. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I first started getting these, they were they were very scary. I, I didn't know what they were, and they they were disturbing to say the least. Um, since then, I've depreciated what they're telling me, and 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 since then, I've also got a solution. I think for how we can get some more time out of this. But getting into the dreams, um, they started off. Um, I, I saw a lot of natural disasters, particularly tsunamis. Which, by the way, I I now believe will be man-made and not not natural. Um, I I saw many many times where um, there was heavy-handed police enforcement. And uh, specifically, I saw people jailed and imprisoned that were completely innocent, um, which honestly, I think we're starting to see that come into play today. Um, I, I was given the number 1861 in one dream. I went back and looked, um, you know, some of these things. I, I, I wanted to say this. When I see people on YouTube saying that they've gotten a dream and they've gotten a date and all this stuff, I... I I'm instantly skeptical because I've had thousands of these dreams and I don't think God works like that at all. I figure if Jesus doesn't know when he's coming back, then then we're not going to know anything either. But this number that I got, 1861, that's the beginning of the Civil War. And I think that's part of the, you know, the impending judgments that are going to come this way. Um, I I've saw many dreams where there was like a, a, a post-disaster world. I don't know if it was an EMP or a nuclear strike or something like that, but people were walking around hungry, scared, and uh, definitely cold. That was another kind of theme is that uh, our climate's not getting warmer. I saw people in jackets. Um, I, uh, I had one dream where I was asked to, you know, change, change teams, which of course I denied. Um, I had... One dream that gave me what I believe is a very specific clue to who the man of perdition is. Um, I also had a dream where um, I saw a giant flash. It could have been a solar flare, but I think it was a nuclear explosion. When I woke up, I heard the words, no son of Hudson shall survive, um, which I believe just means New York City will be destroyed. Um, I... I saw a lot of things. I saw a lot of these. These are sound weird to a lot of people, but I saw a lot of second sun videos or, 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 or shots in my head. One of the things about that was, is that I believe what God was trying to show me was, is, you know, everything up above us is just a sign, you know, and, it, and it's for information from him. But I also, I noticed that nobody was paying attention. And that was the biggest thing of those dreams is that all these massive prophetic things are going on and, and, and everybody's basically oblivious to it, or the majority of people are. Can, can um, we stop right here just a second? Um, you said some very interesting things like the Civil War started in 1861. That was a big, big thing that you remembered. Um, there's been a lot of prophecies uh, 40, 50 years ago from men like Dimitri Dudeman, Henry Groover, David Wilkerson, that kind of, uh, you know, co collaborates what you are saying. And I do believe that we're going to have a civil war in America, whether it happens this year over the election or next year. I believe that we're right there. Also, you talked about the two sons. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Nibiru Planet X. Well, this is a, a, a Russian, uh, I don't know if you can see this, Emanuel Veritaskin, yes. he wrote a book uh, in the 1950s. He was ridiculed, but uh, he was uh, friends with Albert Einstein. He went around the world researching cataclysmic events around the world, and he is stating that this planet, this uh, Nibiru, is in our solar system, and it's going to come back. It's on a 3,600-year orbit, and it's in our solar system now, and people are seeing this. That's why there's telescopes uh up in Arizona, we're down in Arizona. Lucifer, the uh, the Vatican runs it. They have another telescope in uh, South America, uh, uh, one in South Africa. So there's a lot of things that that are uh, uh, verifying your dreams. The second sun, and uh, it all goes to depopulation. But I just want to stop you there because what you're saying can be confirmed by a lot of people. So mm -hmm. you, 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 you're not off base. I think you're right on the money. So let's continue with the, with the, some of your more, uh, more of your dreams. 
Yeah. So, and one thing about the second sum that I think I, I, I kind of like locked into was, you know, I, the book of Genesis tells us very clearly that the sun and moon are just simply lights, right? And I, I've read the book of Enoch, and I believe Enoch was very important to to our time because he was one of the two people that was taken out of this earth without death. And I think that was a marker for God to say, pay attention to, to him. He defines everything above us as a spiritual being. And so when I think about a planet or the sun, I'm I'm just thinking that these are, you know, angels doing what they've been told by God to do. And so when I think about the second son, I think about it as this as a sign from God as the second coming of the son. So, you know, second son um, could be wrong about that, but, you know, I think it's kind of like one of these markers out there. I'm not, because of the way I understand the book of Genesis, I don't feel like there's a really such thing as a planet. <laughs> so, you, you know, I, yeah, I, I believe there's just the earth. Difference. That's where the disagreements come from. You know, it's like all of these countries that got these uh, trillion dollar or billion dollar space programs. It seems like they're wasting their money if there's not uh, something outside that, you know, the Earth, it, it, like Elon Musk, he's spending these billions of dollars building rockets. He wants to go to Mars. If there was no Mars or no moon, uh, then, you know, th so that's the big debate. And, you know, I don't want to get into it here, but everybody's got, you know, their own interpretation. But like I said, your dreams are not off. You know, they're, they're, yeah. you, what you're saying is confirmed by other people. It's just how we interpret things. And like I said, everybody right. interprets things different, but uh, God is showing you what they're, you know, he's showing other people. It's this, uh, you know, everybody's an individual and we interpret things different, but uh, that's very interesting that yes, our, the Bible is our, uh, you know, our key, our manual. Uh, so how are these dreams? Uh, you're seeing a lot of prophetic things. You said you see people in jackets and in uh, tsunamis. Now, um, we reported on this about four years ago, three or four years ago, La Palma, uh, you know, right in the Canary Islands off, uh, off the coast of Spain. They were worried that half of the island would collapse into the water. And if that so, happened, uh, that would create a 300 foot tsunami the entire length of the United States and inundate probably 100 miles inland and probably kill 100 million people. Now, that is still prophesied to come. So I think your tsunami dreams are on target, too. You also have Russia with a nuclear torpedo called the Poseidon, which can actually right. duplicate and they can create a 1500 foot tsunami. So this could either be natural or, you know, uh, man-made. So you're you're right on there. So it seems like, you know, God is speaking through you. And what makes it so good is that you're a CEO, you're the head of your company, and you're uh, a very respected person. And it's not like some guy living up in the mountains, you know, that uh, some hermit, you know, you're a legitimate uh, force, uh, you know, in your in your field. So people can't just discount what you're saying because you're, you know, you're not wearing a straight jacket. <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> not, know, yet. not yet, not <laughs> yet. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just saying that, you, you know, your life and your business legitimizes what you're saying because you're a sane person. These are not like, uh, uh, what do they call it? Psychosis or something else. You actually experience this and it can be collaborated with other, uh, other people. So keep going. This is very interesting. Yeah, you know, and I, I really struggled for the longest time understanding, trying to understand why God chose me because I didn't feel like I was worthy. And I still don't. I know why now he did choose me. You, you know, I, I'm 53 years old. Um, I So I found God, you, you know, in my 40s. Right. So I, I lived 40 pretty worthless, sin, you know, sinful days where I had no relationship with God. But yet he redeemed me. He found some value in my life, something that I could give to others. And, and you know, I serve others uh, now. I spend a lot of my free time feeding, you know, homeless people here in Indianapolis. And I think that's the message is that anyone can be redeemed. And, and you know, if, if he can use me for anything, imagine what he can do for somebody like you or some of your listeners who have, who have led these clean, wonderful lives. Yeah, I mean, uh, I got born again at 12 years old, but, um, you know, uh, I was watching Billy Graham on TV 
I remember the day, it was 1974, I was sitting on a green vinyl uh, chair, a swivel chair. We had one of those 25-inch color TVs, the big wood one, you know, the big cabinet one. And I remember it like yesterday, but um, I, you know, I was, uh, I grew up in teenager in my young years, you know, I was in bars trying to pick up girls and, you know, I wasn't living my life, but I, you know, that did touch me and God never let me actually get really deep into sin because I always had this thing on my shoulder screaming in my ear, don't do that. Don't do that. You know, something was guiding me like uh, they were, it was guiding you to keep me out of trouble. And I could have gotten a lot of trouble, but just that little voice that I guess some people call it your conscience, you know, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't enjoy sin for some, you know, I tried to be a bad person and, and get into sin, but I couldn't enjoy myself. It wasn't, enjoy and I always was thinking, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. God screaming in your ear. So, um, yeah, how has your life, uh, you know, when all this stuff happened, how have you affected your peers? You know, how have they reacted like your, your you know, fellow CEOs and, and, uh, and people in your, your, uh, your sphere of influence, how have they reacted to your Christian walk and, you know, your, your boldness and, um, and proclaiming, you know, that God is working and all of this stuff is going to happen. Uh, I, I, I want to hear about that. Well, five years ago, I was a nut. And so, uh, you, you know, or there was something wrong with me, whatever else. And as time has gone on, that's improved. I think some of my friends are getting older. When people get older, they naturally, you know, start to come come to Christ too. And so that, there's an effect there. But one of the things I've learned around the world, especially in the last, say, year, is people are waking up and they're waking up in droves and they know something's wrong. And this last trip I was on in England, I was there for a week. I really, really heard a lot about that. And they're looking for answers. And um, fortunately for us, we have Christ. That is the answer. And 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 people are starting to get it. Um, they realize that the politicians and the, the bankers and all these people that have been telling us how to run our lives are wrong. And and so I think there's an appetite for you, you know people to to come to our side of the equation. Uh, I don't think we have a lot of time, but but there's definitely an appetite, and that has emboldened me even more. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean it's like on my broadcast, uh, you know, it, it um, we uh, together we've been on YouTube a little bit over five years, and uh, we had a, a big channel, seventy two thousand, and YouTube took us off. They deleted my channel. One day we came home from going grocery shopping and all my channels were gone. And uh, that really devastated me because all the work we put into it, we had over uh, 2,500 videos, over 13 million views, four years of hard work just pulled out from underneath you. It's like my whole world collapsed. And uh, so I had to start again. But um, God has given a lot of people platforms, especially like on YouTube and social media, and these people are Christians, but you never hear them mention God, you know, and that's why they don't understand. God's given you a voice. Uh, we're in the end times. There's people going to hell every day by the millions and you mm -hmm. have an opportunity to affect their life. And, and so the seeds of righteousness and, and, the, and forgiveness and but yet you're in it just to make money. And I don't think God agrees with that. So. I made a decision early on that no matter what people think, no matter what people say, I'm going to give an altar call because there's a lot of churches in America and around the world. They preach for an hour, but they never give an altar call. They never invite somebody to accept Jesus. And G didn't Jesus say that the harvest is great, but they're, you know, pray for labors to go into the harvest. And being a Christian, I believe, is more than just going to church. It's actually taking up your cross daily. And, and trying to win the lost. And uh, that's basically what our program is. We are a news program, but the news brings people in to hear the gospel. You know, that's you've right. got to have, you know, when you go fishing, you put a worm or something on your hook to catch a fish. Well, you're not going to catch a fish without having people interested in what you're saying. And like I said, a lot of people, they say, well, Paul, you do a great job doing the news, but when it comes to religious stuff, you're totally lost. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it, that's why I really don't get into theology and, and scripture debates. And I just focus on one thing, Jesus. And if you don't know him, you're going to a, a worse place, you know, and uh, and that's what we're about. 
And I so appreciate, you know, you telling uh, uh, us your story. Do you want to add anything? How has your family been affected by, um, you know, you coming to Christ and, and promoting this? And and uh, how are they how are they coping with this? I mean, are you doing better now than you were 10 years ago? I mean, is everything just going great or, or can you well, update us on that? Yeah, no. So um, as far as my family, you know, I've been heavily involved for almost seven years with a ministry here in town called Circle City Relief. And I spend one to you know, two, sometimes three weekends. Uh, this is Sunday only down there feeding people. We do uh, spiritual counseling. We do substance abuse help, housing, job placement. It's a number of things. And, and you know, there's a whole team of people that do it. I'm just really a volunteer. But um, that has really changed my life. And so I try to just live by example. I do that. I do that with my family. I've got one kid that's a freshman in college and one's a senior in high school. They definitely, I don't force any of this on them because I, I, I didn't want it forced on me either. Um, but I try to lead the best example. My, my son actually is from in college is coming home Sunday with his girlfriend and he said, can we go to church Sunday? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I want, you know. Um, but the world is hard. The world will pull you away from God. And so you really got to fight through that. And, um, you know, in my household, the right way for me to do it is just be the best example. Um, life is going great. You know, these dreams were, that was a very difficult period for me. And as they were coming out, they were, they were sad. I mean, I... I had one where I saw people lined up outside a factory and they were, they were in that line to be turned into food, to be eaten by people. And I, well, I mean, hold, hold, a lot hold, of, on a, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Can you, can you repeat that dream? Now, did God give you any time frame, or he was just showing you glimpses of what was going to happen? Uh, can you repeat what you just said real slow so the people can absorb this? Yeah, so I saw a dream where it was like a large factory setting and um, there were people being, they were in line, they were standing and they were being run through that line to, to be turned into food. Wow, that is very And, and listen, I don't, um, you, you know, I want to mention stuff like that because it gets to this, in this solution part of what I'm going to talk about, it's going to be, it's going to be why I think it's really important for those of us who are believers to really lean on God. That's, that's, that's my message right now. Um, you know, I also had one where I'm, I don't want to use a name because it, I don't know if this would get flagged for you or not, but the, one of the men yeah, we running, got, we, got, we got to be careful on YouTube because they do censor a lot of stuff. So um, go ahead. Well, the, w one of the men running for president, <laughs> I'll put it that way. Um, uh, I saw him making a peace deal with Iran and North Korea not China and Russia, but so I have for the longest time told all my friends, I said, he's coming back to power. You know, it's interesting to me. Um, he keeps beating everything. You know, it's like he's Teflon Don, like nothing sticks. I, I was hearing that um, he, the, the National Guard was there for sentencing on the 18th of September. And then magically over the weekend, the judge delays it until November. And that judge has not done anything, you know, in his favor up until then. I said, you know, it just keeps lining up to confuse us and get him, you know, get us to trust him. And yeah, so, God, God showed me a lot of things about that man, and that hasn't been really popular on my channel. But I stand, you know, I stand with a conviction, and I'm not going to go into it here. But if you've been watching my channel, you probably know some things that I've I've talked about that are really disturbing about him. But um, yeah, it, it it seems like you're right, Teflon Don, nothing sticks to him. And if he is to fulfill his destiny, uh, he will be the, the the next president. You know, if if not, then, you know, we're wrong. We'll have to go back to the drawing board. But let's go back to the um, to the dream you had. You saw people in a line outside of a factory being turned into food. Now, Adrian, my wife, had a dream years ago that she saw um, people trains uh, going into one of these power plants, these um, coal power plants, and she's seen an assembly line and she's seen humans being hung upside down like chickens. They were naked and their heads were cut off and they were being processed into food. And that really, you know, kind of shocked me. 
But she said, yeah, you know, it, it's a perfect setup because the, the facility is so large. There's a train track there and they would never miss them. And, you know, they have electricity, you know, because they're, uh, they're uh, generating electricity. So nobody would suspect that. But she said, yeah, there were lines and lines of people hanging upside down by their feet. Their heads were already cut off. They were fixing to process them for food. So I do believe, you know, that you're, you know, you're, what you are seeing is from God because uh, there's been many prophecies. There's going to be uh, cannibalism uh, in the end days. Mm. Uh, people, they're going to run out of food. And a lot of people don't understand what is happening. You know, we, we've got this illegal immigration problem coming across the border. Where are these people going? You could you could basically take millions of people into these factories like you're talking about. They would never miss them because they're illegal. They don't a lot of them don't have any papers. And, you know, things happen that people are not aware of. They don't want to think about it because it's so horrible. But, you know, the people that are running the world, I don't push anything past the evil people that are running the world. So, no, uh, it, 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 you know. Um, it, it is so horrible, the things that are going to be happening on the earth. And I, I, I do hope and I do pray for a rapture. But if it doesn't happen right now, we are going to have to face some terrible events. So continue with your dreams and, and the line that you were on. Uh, and uh, so I, uh, yeah, go ahead. you know, really kind of wrapping those up, you, you know, I, uh, the man of perdition, I'll kind of, without, I'm not going to name any names, but one of the central themes to that dream was Austria. Um, I've looked up, you know, anybody that has Austrian descent that's a, that's a well-known political figure right now. There's really only one. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that one kind of plays out. But, you know, I've got a deep feeling inside that, that, that I know who that is. You know, one thing, that's really interesting to me that I've heard a few people talk about is, is MAGA. You know, you heard, you don't hear make America great as much as you hear MAGA. MAGA happens to be the highest order in the church of Satan. <laughs> and I, yeah, that's I, the fifth, I didn't believe that's the fifth highest level. And, and you know what the first level is? The apprentice. No. The apprentice. Well, that can't be an accident. <laughs> The apprentice I, is the I first mean, level. MAGA is the fifth level. Yeah, we could go and, you know, we could, if you want to do a, another program later, we can do another program just on the Antichrist and, and we can compare notes. But yeah, that's what really uh, surprised me. And uh, I, I don't want to get into it here because I don't want to take away what you're great. talking. That's a whole nother program. If you want to come back on, I'll, I'll interview you again and we can just talk about, we'll compare notes. So people won't think I'm crazy, you know, because <laughs> you're I not. Think God, God is really showing people the, the ones that are that, uh, you know, um, the ones that are close to him, the real truth. And and God spoke to me in um, in March of 2020 when Operation Warp Speed was announced live on TV. Something said in my ear, don't take this. And he is the you know what? You know, and it was clear, you know, and I've been yelling it, screaming it. And uh, I made a lot of people mad because most of the people watch my channel support him. And, you know, there's nothing I can do. But the Bible does say that if it were possible, he would fool the very elect. And there was going to come a strong delusion that they would believe a lie. You know, so we have scripture to support everything. And a, a lot of people don't understand the word deception. Deception means right. that you're believing something that is not true. And it's so convincing that you think it's true until you find out different. But um, yeah, that's a whole nother subject. So, <laughs> so is God, well, has I, God well, I think, I think you're, I think you're onto something there. <laughs> so. so has, has God given you more of these prophetic dreams or have they stopped? No. Um, so I had one, you know, about three weeks ago that was really another one of these that was very disturbing to me um it was it was about war and um it, it was like the best way to describe it's like the fog of war if you've ever seen any of these like especially like these world war ii movies where there's smoke everywhere and guys are running around i saw that but i but the the soldiers that i saw were kids 
And I woke up knowing that, you know, they were going to make our kids fight, fight this next big war. And, and then I saw something where one of my sons was, you know, had, had, had passed in the war. So obviously I'm praying that that's not true, but I do think that that's their intention. And I believe as part of the national defense authorization act, they just, um, made the uh, draft enlistment for girls and boys mandatory. So I'm, I'm almost any positive your, they did. Is your, your kids are military age, aren't they, or not? Oh, yeah, 19, they're almost 19 and 18, yeah. Okay, so this could happen very soon. I do believe, you know, within the next three years, um, uh, we did an interview with Pastor Philip Barnett. I don't know if you've seen any of them interviews. I've but seen I think him, we've yeah. interviewed him interviewed him like four different times. And um, he said that uh, it's getting really close. Uh, God gave him the month, November the 11th, but not the year. So if it doesn't happen this November, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen next November because the the way Russia is moving, uh, the amount of land they are taking, um, I don't know if they're going to get it accomplished this year, but for sure, if there's not a nuclear war in between next year, that's when Deagle.com and all of these other prophecies say that America is going to lose over 100 million people. Actually, it's close to 200 million people. And that can only come from either a nuclear war or a massive pandemic or maybe, you know, a natural disaster, an asteroid or something. But um, I think our time is running out. And do you have anything uh, you want to close with? I mean, uh, something. Well, very I'll tell early. you, I, I, I think God showed me a way or, you know, not around this because I, the way I look at the book of revelation is really simple. There's 21 judgments of man in there. There there's, there's, you know, seven seals, seven vials, seven trumpets. And, and then there's this seven year period where the man of perdition reigns. And then, you know, of course, Christ comes back. He judges all mankind. He burns up the earth and heaven. And then we, we get this new Jerusalem to live in with him, which is amazing. That's what I'm holding my hope for. But those judgments um, are like dominoes. They all, to, to me, they happen in an exact order. Seal one was pestilence. And I believe that the pestilence wasn't actually CV, but it was the response to it because that's still ongoing today. Yeah, Seal we can, two we is can't, war. We can't talk about that here. So we'll have to do that on the I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, but um, but but I think seal two or, or seal two is war, and then um, seal three is economic collapse, and then and then seal four is civil conflict. But you can see how those dominoes are completely interconnected. And the one thing that I've noted through the book of Revelation, and this is where I get into more of the positive stuff. There's no time listed in each one of those seals, so. Um, yeah, everybody says the Great Tribulation is seven years, but those 21 judgments happened, you know, before all this. They they don't have any amount of time listed to, to them. So if I was right about Seal 1 being what it is, it's been ongoing for like four years now. And so that means that, I mean, although that part of that time was awful, we were doing radio shows or we were doing vacations or we were, you know, we were living during that time period. And so I think as each one of these goes on, more people will die. But those of us who are here will have periods of normalcy where things are OK. And so I think what God showed me is a way where we can get more time. But now that the sequence has started, there's no stopping it. It's it's, it's just going to continue until Christ returns. Yeah, I think that judgment, like you said, I think judgment has been rendered on the United States and the world that. Um, I don't really think it can be slowed down because I think we're too far into it. But um, I do think that we do have an opportunity to use the time that we have to um, to affect the world and try to bring in the harvest while we still can, because there is a limited time. You know, uh, my personal opinion, I think we're already in the tribulation, the midpoint. We haven't re mm -hmm. we haven't um, experienced the wrath of God. We haven't re experienced the really bad stuff, but we're almost there. And everybody, even if they're not a Christian, everybody can see that something is about to happen. I mean, just looking at the geopolitical situation, the political situation, the natural disasters, they can feel it, even though they're, you know, a lot of people does, doesn't know God, but um, 
can you take an, a, a, another few minutes to address people, professional people just like you, CEOs, heads of companies, respected people? Can you address them uh, with a Christian message and, uh, and, and reach out to them now uh, before we close? Because that's what's so important, because a lot of people, they think they're, they're too smart to believe in God. They're too wealthy. They're too, um, their intellect is so up there that they don't need God. Can you address those people uh, since you are on that level? You're a CEO. You own a major company. Can you address the professional people that are watching us now? Absolutely. So uh, I, I want to say again, I believe we can get more time out of this. What God showed me was essentially these three R's that, that will buy us more time. And uh, basically the first one is, is repent. You, you know, the United States has been the most evil country in the world in my lifetime. I don't think that's disputable anymore. And we, we need to repent for those sins and the things that we're allowing going on in our neighborhoods and our cities. Um, we've got to we've got to renew the relationships between all peoples. Um, I talk about Matthew nineteen twenty eight all the time. In that verse, um, the disciples are asking Jesus, "What do we get for all this suffering? We gave up everything to be with you. What do we get?" And Jesus looks at him and says, "At the renewal of all things, this is you know when he comes back to judge all of mankind." He says, "You will judge the twelve tribes of Israel with me," and I. To me, that is what it says to me is that Jesus right then can describe everyone who's living and who's ever lived as just one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so I think the differences that that are race and political parties and religions and all this stuff is absolute garbage. Really, God looks at us as just one of the 12 tribes of Israel, which in Greek means children of God. <laughs> so I think things are really simple. And then the last part is the return. I think God is looking for us to return to him. And as I you know, told you about the dream where I saw people getting lined up to eat, I'm not so sure that we're not going to need manna to rain down. Um, you know, Elijah had ravens bring him, you know, bread and meat every day. And some of us may need that, but the things that we're going through right now are we're going to require a tremendous amount of faith. I do believe the worst of these 21 judgments are reserved for the people that don't believe. It's basically God giving 21 more chances for people to get it right before he sentences them to a life of attorney somewhere. And so I, I to me, this is a time to be positive, uplifting. Let's let's try to get more time out of this. Let's get more people in the fold. We've got yeah, enough so, time to do that. So if you uh, if you were in a room, if you were in a room with 100 CEOs and, and top business executives, what would be a five minute speech that you would give them? Let's say this is your this is your Waterloo. This is your grand finale before you leave this earth. What would be a five minute speech that you would give your peers of 100 CEOs, head of companies, professional doctors, lawyers? Uh, what would be your speech? Well, I, I like to think about what I'm doing is leaving a legacy. And so I when I started this company, Obviously, I thought there would be some success to it, but that's not what drives me. Um, what drives me is what I can do to make the community better and what I can do to make the, the lives of people around me better. And so I think this is a great time when we see such strife in the business world to, to change the internal focus of the company and say, listen, we, we could do things differently if we tied our our company's profits to giving and feeding the homeless people, for instance, in whatever city that they're in, do that for a year and see what it does to their bottom line. Because God will respond to those people that are that are that are doing things that are in service for him. And so I that's what I encourage people in my kind of role to do is, is to really just change their their focus and not be so profit driven that they forget about the, the world around them. Because I to be honest with you, if you think that, you know, we have a massive homeless crisis here in Indianapolis. If you think that you can have peace, security, and a thriving business when 20% of your population can't even put a meal on their table, I think you're sadly mistaken because those people are going to resort to whatever means they, 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 they have at their disposal to get a meal. And so it, it's basically self-serving <laughs> to do this stuff if you really want to get down to it. But 
Um, I am a living example of how somebody can put all their trust in Jesus Christ and get everything back from it and more. And so that's, that's really what I would, would inspire people to do. Yeah, it is so important because there are so many companies that the bottom line is the ultimate uh, goal. It, it, it's all about money and how much, how can we increase profits when they don't really realize that if you take care of your employees, if you take care of the people around you, God will bless you uh, and, and, and increase you more than just striving just for money and material wealth and everything. So I do want to thank you uh, for showing up today. This is uh, Dave Bunting. He is the founder uh, and the CEO of Crown Harvest Hardware, uh, a company that sells, um, I guess, furnishings for hotels, motels, uh, and large complexes. And if you do need some uh, some uh, furnishings and uh, materials and products, please check out his um, his website. It's Crown Harvest Hardware. But before we go, we do this on every video. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now uh, to come to know uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because I do believe that time is short on this earth. We don't know whether we got a year, two years, five years. We really don't. But everybody can see that we are in the last day. So if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you cannot say for 100% that if you die today and you would go to heaven, you can know that today. If you will bow your head, repent of your sins, and ask Jesus to forgive you, he will right now. Just say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, Lord, and I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the Son of God, and I do believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me, and you rose again the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving all of my sins, and thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Now, if you said that prayer, you are saved and you are born again. And the first thing I recommend is find a local church or find some Christian friends and, uh, and open up a conversation. And if you have time, uh, make an appointment to get baptized in, uh, in a church. You can be baptized in a swimming pool, a lake, a river, a stream, even your bathtub in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So I do want to thank you for watching our program today. I want to thank Dave Bunting from Crown Harvest Hardware for taking uh, a few minutes out of his very, very stressful days. I know uh, running a company is probably really stressful, a lot of hours. Thank you, sir. We appreciate Thank all you. the information, uh, all of your dreams, and we look forward to talking to you again. So Thank you. we're going to see you guys later, and uh, stay tuned for a breaking news update later today. Bye-bye.